Hey, we got a uh, a new toy on the bench here, new bit of test equipment to poke at and have some fun with. Um, I came across this as a bit of a fluke <laughs> on uh, Yahoo Auctions. Um, I was looking at some HP gear and at the bottom of the web page there's a thing that says, hey, you might want to look at these, click on these links. And so I clicked on one and it was uh, it was this, so I'll put some bids on it and um, I won. So I got this in my hot little hands, a uh, Fluke 731B DC reference standard. So it's um, used for calibrating and w checking your uh, your other equipment. You use this as uh, kind of a transfer standard so you know if you've got it this uh, calibrated professionally it's going to be given out exactly 10 volts or 1 volt uh, delta E which is microvolts as you set on here and also um, 1.018 and 1.019 volts plus whatever you set here uh, the reason for those funny voltages is 1.018 volts and 1.019 that comes from the western cell uh, which was the voltage standard up until about 1990 uh, and that was at about one or about it was exactly 1.01830 volts and I think the 1.019 is from a different uh, variant of that uh, western cell there must be a different slightly different voltage anyway um, that's why those are there because some of the older test equipment uses a uh, western cell as the uh, the reference for when you're calibrating so this will then output that voltage as well so you can calibrate a wide range of things and check a wide range of things against uh, this unit um, it's basically got just a power switch, we've got the uh, positive and negative output, we've got a guard, which is kind of like a shield sort of thing, output, the knob for uh, selecting what voltage range you're using, and uh, this multi-turn uh, dial for dialing in an exact microvolts. Um, apart from that, there's not much else on the front, we've got just a little gauge there for the battery, so when I plug this in to the power, it will shoot across to the right to say that we're using a, what does that say, line operation. And uh, if, if you turn the unit off, um, it'll turn off. But if you unplug the unit with it turned on, it uses the internal battery to stay on. And then it will show you in the green area if the battery is um, going flat or if it's uh, properly charged. That way you can make sure that this thing stays on at all times and is always remaining stable. Because if you turn it off and it cools down, and you, know, you, you can lose the uh, accuracy. But if you leave it on, you want to leave it on all the time. So when, you've, when it's been set... Um, you can take it to the calibration place and the internal battery will keep it turned on. They'll calibrate it, you can bring it back to your lab, still turned on, running on batteries, and it will remain uh, perfectly accurate. That's the idea anyway, but um, we'll probably find that the NICADs inside are uh, well past their use-by date, but um, we'll be replacing those as a matter of course anyway. So, on the back, if we turn it around, it's just the usual thing, their IAC input, a fuse, and then a, um, a shield, a case shield connection. Sometimes you need that for your um, for maintaining all your your EMF and EMI um, suppression and whatnot. And uh, this is set to 115 volts, but um, the switch you can be switched to 230, and there's a switch inside. You actually take the case off, and there's a switch in there to to swap that, which isn't too bad because uh, it means it can't be switched over accidentally. So I'll grab my screwdriver and let's take the top off and see what lies beneath. Just two screws. And then that should just lift off, I believe. Yep, it just comes off like that. And there we go. It's not that complicated inside. So, um, and, and the uh, schematic isn't so complicated either. But what the, where the magic lies is underneath this box with uh, precision resistors. And that's where the money is. So we've got a transformer at the back. Down the bottom there, right down in there, is the uh, voltage selector switch. And you'd access that by taking the bottom off, because the bottom it comes off. Just the same way. We might do that anyway, just so we can flip it around and see everything from the best vantage point. So there we go. There's our voltage selector switch. We've got the battery pack here, which, if I turn it back over again, you can see, well, the one of the wires is disconnected because it's corroded away. But it's not looking so crash hot. It hasn't leaked everywhere. I've seen some of these which are absolutely terrible condition but this isn't too bad it hasn't actually dripped anywhere it looks like in the case we've had a little bit of uh something going on maybe from the gases coming out of it i'll just give that a bit of a wipe and it neutralize that with some something and then um that'll be fine anyway uh bridge rectifier smoothing cap there's a a few bits and pieces for basic charging it just trickle charges these batteries uh there's no smarts about the um about the charging at all and then at the front we got a, uh, a nice little rotary switch there, 
a multi-turn pot that might be a I'm not sure if that's a uh, it's probably a 10 turn I would say 5k linear and it's a born so it's a good quality one there that's you want a good quality one for that and it gets a lot more turns through a little gearbox inside this inside this case here if we then uh, remove the cover here we will find the goodies you see there's a, a few different um, holes there that's for calibration and it's, they're labeled R24, R12, R15, R17 and R19 on the uh, the side circuit board here just along along there um, I might put some labels on there myself the label maker saying exactly what they are because in the manual it says this is this pot is uh, this calibration pot this is that calibration pot and then it just refers to them by the uh, by the uh, designator R17, R19 etc but maybe I'll just put some labels on there just to make it easier so when I'm reading the manual I can uh, see exactly what each pot is for there's also one more pot through that hole which is a um, just a general calibration for um yeah there it is there I think that's a 10 volt calibration or just like a, it affects all of the ranges anyway so we got a heap of sealed fluke resistors if you've ever seen inside some fluke test equipment that's um you know from the 80s onwards uh, you'll probably recognize these sort of sealed hermetically sealed wire wound resistors same with these ones these look like they're uh, wire wound on some mica if I can get the light correct let's have a look there we go these ones here I'm not going to poke them too much then it looks like we got the voltage reference is it that one or that one I'm not sure one of those is the voltage reference anyway oh, that's the uh, the super the super duper critical part and it looks like we've got one carbon resistor there but um, the rest of them look like they're they're relatively decent like low temperature coefficient resistors these are uh, the blue ones down in there there's some green ones up there they look like yeah the money shot right there if these ones burn out good luck getting them because I, th I believe they're done in matched pairs as well a few of them so you don't want to you don't want to go messing around with them too much 0.05 percent yeah and they're low um, low temperature coefficient super accurate but what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be replacing these I can get a uh, new NICADs um, so I might just replace them with NICADs because it means I don't have to change anything else and then once I've done that I'll um, I'll be checking it against the uh, the Keysight multimeter benchtop multimeter I've got just up here it's a 34461A which is a six and a half digit I don't have an eight, eight and a half digit I I do uh, lust after an eight and a half digit but I don't have one so um, uh, I might see how far out it is and I might just give it a, a slight tweak with my tongue in the right position to uh, bring it back in against the six and a half digit and then I'll let it sit there and uh, just log for a while just do some data logging and um, see if there's too much drift or not and uh, see how that looks um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna bother getting it super duper calibrated but maybe I will it depends on what it turns out costing to do that so that is basically what we've got not too much going on there at all it's just a uh, power supply battery charger and then our reference with the um, all the super duper resistors as the uh, voltage dividers so next step I guess is to head to Akihabara and we'll get some batteries so I'll be back in just a moment okay battery is almost ready to go in so I've got uh, my AA nickel metal hydrides I decided to go to nickel metal hydride over uh, nickel cadmium just because they got a much higher capacity um, the AA is at 2000 milliamp hour or 2 amp hour whereas if I go for nickel cadmium it's only going to be 1 amp hour or 1000 milliamp hour so I get double the capacity for the same size uh, with a trickle charging rate from this thing it'll be fine these can be trickle charged at 200 milliamps and I think this thing puts out like 50 milliamps or something around that ballpark so trickle charging will be fine with these there's a lot of surface area so they won't overheat they'll be not a problem at all and they're cheap enough that you know in five years or ten years when they they're dead again yeah replace it with something else uh, so I've got that done um, I, I bought tabbed versions as well 
found tab version I could choose tabs or no tabs these are actually apex technology Japan brand apex technology brand made in China all the all the good stuff is made in China is that how the saying goes I don't know anyway the um I've got the heat shrink as well so this is a what's it Sumitomo brand FZ series apparently it's 50 millimeter size but like the size is 50 millimeters if you measure the, the uh the diameter but um if you lay it flat it's uh, 80 millimeters if you see on the uh, the lines there 80 millimeters wide and that is just the right size for that sort of circumference of two AA batteries so if that goes there it'll just slide in just nice if I can if I can do it on camera there we go look at that beautiful that'll shrink down just nicely perfect battery pack um, so I've got, got to solder the wires on there I might fold them back and bring them all the way along and put some more tape on just so that they're nicely strain relieved um, also I found uh, some nice gold plated connectors or pins or socket pins things which closely approximate what was already there you can see that one on the wire that's the old one uh, it's a little bit green in some parts what happened was the um, the electrolyte wicks down the cable kind of like solder wick or whatever or water into a sponge and it comes out the other end and it can corrode stuff so uh, this hasn't actually wicked enough to corrode the board but it did definitely get the um, the connector there so I'm gonna rep replace that with a brand new bit of wire and uh, brand new connectors should be beautiful um, wrapped in cat on tape so it's all nicely insulated and held together heat shrink on there would be perfect now the old battery as a uh, comparison nickel cadmium rechargeable battery it's actually uh, 450 milliamp hour so this one is like four times the capacity at 14.4 volts 12 cells in uh, both of them but you might count six that's because these ones are actually half uh, height so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and they're slightly bigger in diameter than the uh, double A's but they're like a bit more than half the height so um, I think that I, I do remember that being a standard size I don't know if, if that's called three-quarter double-a or something or it's not sub-c they're, they're smaller than sub-c's which are very common in uh, power tools but um yeah I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head what uh, size that is I'll I'll put something here just for reference um, but yeah so that's gonna be recycled and uh, dealt with appropriately we must deal with it so uh, that is the battery pack sorted bit of wire connectors heat shrink done um, Next, I went, also when I was at Ikea Bar, I went and bought some extra bits. So there's an uh, electrolyte capacitor here. I haven't tested it, but I bought a new one, a new uh, Nichicon VX series. Nice capacitor. Axial. This one's actually a 220 microfarad, whereas what's in there is a 150. Power supply section, the more capacitance, the better, generally speaking. Um, so that'll be fine to plonk in there if needed. Uh, a few screws, because the holder which was designed for the old batteries is too small for the new batteries we got a bit of space there so I bought some longer screws that should be able to um, longer screw there same thread pitch that should be able to hold that to the uh, side and um, clamp it in nicely uh, hang on I've got the uh, thread pitch I'll let you know what the thread pitch is for reference um, I took a photo so I'm just bringing it up on my phone here uh, where are we? It is there. We go. Uh, Thirty-two sixteenths, five eight five eighths of an inch long, I believe. That sounds about right. Yeah, about five eighths of an inch long, and they're thirty-two sixteenths um, thread pitch. Crazy, crazy uh, imperial measurements. A number six. I think it's a number six screw. Someone knows what that means. I don't. I just got to match up the thread pictures so that that's that sorted also bought a bunch of uh, components passives um, there's some carbon composite resistors in here on the power supply and on the uh, the main board here so I'm going to go through and uh, test those make sure they haven't drifted out of spec and if they have I bought a bunch of metal film resistors of various uh, sizes and uh, uh, wattages and they'll go in if required. Also, there's some new Zenodiodes there because there's a few Zenodiodes which I have heard may 
Drift or Mago Bad. Um, while I was there, they're cheap as cheapest chips so I picked up a bunch of them and I can um I think I bought 10 so I can characterize them and choose which one is uh closest to what's specified in the um in the uh schematic in the bill of materials make sure I'm as close to spot on as possible there's also a uh tantalum capacitor just if I can get the light right there we go just at the end of my finger there little red drop shape there um tantalums have a tendency to uh, go bad if they're uh, stressed in any way whatsoever so um, that's a 35 volt I believe it was a 1 microfarad was it 1 microfarad 105 on the uh, on the package here F uh, 35 volt so um, I've actually bought a 50 volt because it was there and cheap at the store probably won't need it but I got it just in case and I got a couple of uh, current resistors these are uh, current resistors, current diodes. Uh, these diodes actually um, limit the amount of current flowing through. These are uh, E102s, which are 1 milliamp at 100 volt. Um, they can handle 100 volts. And we've got two of them in the unit. Um, they're actually, in this unit, they're in uh, transistor-looking packages. So there's one... If I can get the light right again. Just here. So the one on the, uh, on the left is a standard transistor, but the one on the right, it's only got two legs. And um, it's the uh, it's a diode. And there's one on the top here. If you see those three, just here, one, two, and three. Ah, Trying to maneuver. There we go. You can see that. Uh, this end one on the right hand side is also a diode in a um, transistor looking package with just two legs, not three. You can tell it's got two legs. It's not a transistor. That's the diode. So um, I've heard that they can sometimes drift around a little bit, maybe sometimes. So I've got two equivalents. So the what I've got in here is actually labelled uh, CR505, um, C505, CR505, uh, 1 milliamp. I think these are rated at 50 volts. Uh, current diode. So the ones I've got, the E-102, um, they're the same one milliamp, but they're a uh, 100 volt because of technology makes things better over time. And uh, they can go in if needed. A lot of this stuff I just bought just in case because it's so cheap for, to buy a couple of resistors. And um, yeah, I don't want to get stuck and have to go to Kihabara again. Well, I do want to go to Kihabara again. I love going to Kihabara, but you know, I want to get this thing done now. So um, I don't want to have to wait for another day or two to have to make another trip. Um, also, I went and bought one of these. It's a uh, IEC mains filter, TDK Lambda, very, very good brand, EMC filter. This one is an RPE-2003, it's a 3 amp rated, and um, that if I have enough gumption, enough uh, genki as the Japanese would say, enough uh, energy, uh, I'll put that in in place of the standard one here. The reason for that is um, it makes me feel good, there's no real need to do it, but um, it will help to filter out any... Uh, noise coming in from the mains and um, prevent it coming in and affecting our readings. Also it helps to prevent stuff going out as well in case you need the EMC compliance or whatever for a product that you design. Um, so that might go in there if I feel like it. Um, just be aware that if you buy one of these, uh, check what the power draw of your um, device is and don't get anything crazy big. Don't go, oh I'll go for a 10 amp version because bigger is better. Not always. Uh, often what happens is these things are a set size. They're a, a standard sort of size. And if you go for a 10 amp version, the inductors inside have to have thicker cable or thicker wire to pass that higher current. That means that they, they can only fit less windings on the, on the bobbins inside. So you get less inductance. More current, thicker wire, less windings, less inductance. That means less filtering. So if you have something like this, this only, oh, what's the fuse rating? Uh, at 115 volts, it's half an amp. I can't get like a one amp version of one of these, or I couldn't uh, off the shelf. So I went for a three amp. Um, if I went for the for the 10 amp version, it would be less inductance, less filtering. So size it appropriately. A little bit more than what you need is fine, but don't go crazy because you want as much filtering as possible. Um, there's a uh, usually there's a schematic on the side, and it will also tell you a list of the sizes of capacitors and inductors that are in there. If not, you find the um, the uh, data sheets online and uh, you can uh, make comparisons and see what the goal is when you um, when you're selecting it so uh, that's pretty much all we got 
to do now is uh, start putting stuff in. Finish this battery pack. Oh, a trick for these battery packs. Um, if you've got a 3D printer, you can 3D print one of these. you find on Thingiverse, uh, 3D printable vice. I'm, I'm actually going to make some new uh, jaws that are kind of scalloped in uh, like a half moon shapes. So when I put the batteries in, it'll kind of cradle the batteries, stop them from sliding around. But yeah, I found this really, really helpful to um, hold the battery packs nice and square and at level while I solder the tabs. But any sort of little vice like this would, would make the job so much easier than trying to do it. You know, masking tape and rubber bands or whatever. Just stick it in. Cinch it up and then do 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 your soldering. Perfect. So um, yeah, that saved me a lot of time and frustration. So I'll go ahead, do a couple of tests, and um, once I've got this thing somewhat operational, we'll be back to see how it works and um, see how accurate it is. See what it reads on the output. See if it even works in the first place. All right, I think we're done. Um, basically, what we've done is we've replaced the battery. That's got a uh, four thousand milliamp hour. A nickel metal hydride uh, battery pack there that's going to last a long time it's actually running right now um, if I show you the battery gauge you can see the needles just to the right of the um, of the green section I think you can see that there that means the battery is good and if I put on power it'll go all the way to the right so um that is on which is fantastic because that means it can stay on and stable and uh, you know all powered up and warmed up um, I've also replaced all of the uh, carbon composite resistors. There was about five or six, I think, from memory. And um, two of them, two, three, maybe a, maybe three were uh, out. They were, two of them were meant to be 5%, but they were right up to a 10% difference from what they were meant to be. And there was an 8K, 8.1K, and it was actually ringing 9.1K. So I went ahead and replaced all of the, um, the carbon composites because they do tend to drift with age. And I've put a metal film in there, 1% uh, metal films with... Uh, a 50 parts per million, 50 ppm uh, temperature coefficient, so they'll be nice and stable. Um, also, we have put a new capacitor there. The old one I uh, tested it on my um, my uh, capacitance meter, and it um, it barely even registered. So I thought, uh, if it's reading even a little bit funny, eh, just replace it. They're cheap, and uh, this one tests perfect because it's brand new. It's a um, yeah, Nichicon. VX series. Uh, longer screws to hold the uh, bracket because the battery is deeper and um, I had to trim a little bit off the sides of the bracket just to fit down in around the transformer and the uh, input jack or input plug. Uh, talking about the input plug, I did actually replace it with the, um, the new style. So the old one is just here. Little short one, just uh, no filtering at all. I'll put the filter one in. It might help. Um, definitely not going to hurt. And uh, that's going to do some uh, EMC filtering and whatnot. And I've gone around also and put deoxid on all the uh, connections, polished them up, polished up the earth one at the back there, nice and shiny like. And uh, that is pretty much done. It wasn't such an in-depth thing. It's a pretty simple unit, but uh, all the magic is in there with the high precision uh, resistors. Also, if you ever need uh, new connectors. Uh, for your battery pack, if yours are corroded out or missing like mine were. Um, down in the description below, I'll put a link. You can actually buy them from DigiKey and whatnot. Uh, they're not the exact ones, but they're very, very close, and they do fit quite well. Um, and they're gold-plated too. So, yeah, you'll find that they're pretty cheap. Maybe uh, just under a dollar each or something. You only need a few. And uh, that is it. Oh, yeah, I put some deoxid on the, um, the rotary switch here. And uh, have given it a bit of a calibration against my uh, six and a half digit multimeter, the three four four six one A, the key sight, and uh, yeah, it's actually reading very very well. So if you look on the screen now, you'll um, you'll see the the readouts. I had them running generally about overnight, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much spot on. It's um, working quite well indeed. So that is uh, pretty much it. Just got to put the case on. The uh, the case panel's on, and um, this is ready to be put into service. I, uh, I'll have to uh, do some more calibration work on it. I'm just going to let it you know, warm up, settle in, all that sort of thing, and I'll tweak it and test it, and then let it settle again, and then tweak it and test it and let it settle, and um, just narrow down that uh, calibration to make sure this thing is as spot on as I can get with my 6.5-digit multimeter. Um, I would love to have access to an 8.5-digit, but um, yeah, 
I'll have to find someone uh, nearby in Japan that has one that's willing to let me uh, bor uh, let me lend it or let me borrow it. So um, that might happen at a later stage. So that is pretty much all done. So uh, thumbs up. It's working well. And um, we've had a successful restoration and a uh, slight upgrade with those resistors and uh, the input jack. All right, hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you in the next one.